What's up, everybody? Here we are. We have done it. This is the final episode of the Embodied Self Love series here on the podcast. If you are watching on YouTube, I just need to let you know I'm still up in the Bay Area. I'm at my friend's house. They don't have air conditioning, and it is approximately 175,000 degrees today. <laughs> I'm basically recording from hell, so if you are concerned that I look like I'm melting, don't be concerned, I'm going to be fine, but you are correct, I am melting. If you are listening, lucky you, you do not have to be subjected to literally watching me sweat while I record this episode. <laughs> anyway, um... I'm so excited for this wrap up episode. This is episode number 345. So if you want anything that I mention, links to all the rest of the episodes, you can find that at the show notes page at untameyourself.com forward slash 345. What we're going to do in the wrap up today is, first of all, last week in the boundaries episode, um, which thank you so much for listening. I got so much great feedback from so many people. Um, there were some questions people had submitted that I didn't have enough time to answer. So we're going to answer the boundaries questions. I also want to do a little overview, a little review. There's a little prayer I want to share with you. I want to give you a preview of our next podcast series that is coming up at the end of October. So we'll have a little hiatus for about a month and a half. In that time, we'll be um, re-releasing the website at untameyourself.com and as well releasing something I'm super excited about after many, many, many years of geeking out on archetypes, studying these things, embodying these things, working so much within specifically the wild woman archetype, I'm going to be... Um, putting out a, an archetype quiz for wild women. So it's actually to explore all the sub archetypes within the wild woman archetype that I have observed in myself and my clients and my students and in my work over the last seven years. Um, so this is an original body of work. I'm not basing this on anyone else's archetype work. Um, although, you know, in the unconscious and the psyche, there's influence of so much in the Akashic field where I draw so much. There's influence of so much. But um, you know how I feel about this. None of no, Nothing we ever create as individuals is actually ours at all. The divine inspiration comes from somewhere. But um, let's dive in today to wrap up self-love. So there's something I want you to know. If you've been listening to this whole series, and by the way, if you have randomly landed on this episode, you can listen to this. It's fine. But I highly highly encourage you to go back and listen to the rest of the series. It's seven episodes. It is binge worthy. I promise you. Um, there is no going back after this. You've, if you've listened to the whole series, you have been activated towards self-love in a direction that you cannot slide back from. Now, like all things, healing, growth, and transformation, you might have better days than others, but you have a higher understanding now. Your new standards have been activated, your worthiness, your acceptance, and everything else we discussed here in the framework. Self-awareness, self-knowledge, self-acceptance, self-trust, and self-respect. You have better access to these things now because you listen to this, because you engage. Some of you I know listen to certain episodes or all the episodes multiple times. You cannot forget what you heard about any of these things. It is literally in you now. You're aware, you're willing, and of course, you're capable. And I don't need to know you personally to know that those three things are true for all of you. You're aware, you're willing, and of course, you are capable. So I want to cover you all in a little prayer today. Um, and my prayer for you is that from this day forward, self-love is a new set and return point for you. It is your base level it is your home frequency, and it is something that you are able to return to over and over and over and over again in all of its iterations because it will look different over the course of your lifetime. Even if it's a little shaky right now, right? Everything that eventually stands tall and strong requires its foundation to be built, and how it stands is based on the individual. That's what we've done here in this series. My prayer for you is that you always remember and you can really feel inside of you that you are love in a body. You are worthy of love from yourself, from life, from others. That love is available to you. You are already loved more than you know. And may you feel this, know this, live this every single day 
for the rest of your lifetime. Amen. Amen. A friggin' men. So to review some things from the series, self-love will invite you and guide you to all of the right places. I mean, if there's a mantra to have about self-love, this is it. Self-love will invite me and guide me to all of the right places. If you're tuning in, if you're tapping into self-love, you cannot go wrong. I promise you. If it is genuine self-love, and this is why I have a framework for it, because there's some real bypassy, ego-driven self-love teachings out there, especially in the form of like miscellaneous memes on the internet. So you know your Virgo friends, <laughs> queen of discernment up in here, needed to create a framework so we could root ourselves, we can ground ourselves, and we could do all of the work needed to love ourselves, right? We look at the ugly stuff, we look at the pleasant, the delightful stuff, we look at the full spectrum, everything that is true, so that we could develop self-love through that framework, which again, self-awareness, self-knowledge, self-acceptance, self-trust, and self-respect. And then that bonus episode last week was boundaries. Boundaries is an epic practice for integrating, cultivating, nurturing, developing, anchoring into, and doing self-love. Because this is not just a noun, like Bell Hooks taught us. This is a verb. This is something you do. And she said that about love. So I'm applying it to self-love. It is not just something you say, it's a constant and ever evolving thing and it requires the ABCs, which you've heard me mention throughout the series as well. Actions, behaviors, and choices. Self-love is a responsibility. It is not a trend, it is not self-indulgent, and it is not just about you either. So those of you watching know, um, I have my notes here. Those of you listening know too, I remind you every week so I, I can stay on track here because I get a little carried away sometimes when I get excited. But um, you must give yourself the time, attention, love, and respect that you give to others so readily. There is not a single area of your life that is not touched by how you treat yourself. So self-love is something that you cultivate, it is something you practice in terms of do you treat yourself in a loving way and what makes up love, kindness, compassion, forgiveness, grace, mercy. Are you gentle with yourself, right? Do you shit talk yourself? Perfectionism is not self-love, right? That's not a standard, that is a control mechanism right? Discernment brings you standards, values, priorities, being clear on those things. That brings you actual standards, not perfectionism. Whatever has been your story of your past, you get to write a new story through the lens of self-love now. You get to reframe things, you get to reclaim things, redefine things, and refine things to be aligned with how it is that you want to be loving and treating yourself. Even little micro efforts um, to be more loving towards yourself will also ripple into you being more loving towards others because when you feel good, you can be kinder and more friendly, outgoing, polite, or at least, at the very least, just acknowledge the presence of other people. I know some people are super shy or super introverted, but you know, I think about this all the time when I'm out and about in the world, and not that with COVID we've been out and about so much, but I mean, even at the grocery store, do you make eye contact with people? Do you acknowledge that other people exist? That is a loving thing to do. I know you might not feel like it or be in a place to do it all the time, but Again, I want to remind you that acts of love can be the little tiniest, most granular little things throughout the course of your days. And again, this is towards yourself and towards other people. So how do you want to show up? Once you begin to embody self-love, you automatically become a role model of it for others. As I've been working on the pages to re-release the untameyourself.com website, I'm going back through old website copy and things that I've written from like seven years back. And, you know, one of the things that I'm always talking about is we're all role models, whether we want to be or not, because people are always watching us, especially if you have children, people are really always watching and learning from you. 
But just based on how you show up, how you behave, how you act, how you treat someone, your energy could shift the energy of a whole room, of a whole meeting, of a whole event, of a whole environment. So when you're the one bringing the love, you get to contribute to the set point of the experience. You do not have to dread going to things if you know you're bringing the love, because one way or another, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel good within yourself. You're not going to need the external to be any certain way for you to feel as good. Am I saying that you will be impervious to all external factors for the rest of your life? No, absolutely not. However, to be able to be more rooted and grounded in the power of your self-love, you will be less perturbable, less permeable, less affected by what goes on around you because you're not needing those things to feel okay or fine within yourself the way that you used to. Um, this is why I also truly believe, because I've experienced it myself and I've seen it with a lot of my clients over the years, um, self-love is part of trauma healing, right? If you have had trauma, the effects of trauma often affect your self-worth and your sense of self. A lot of people with trauma, part of that work is developing a sense of self. If you have identified with the trauma, the events, how it happened, what it took away from you, the effect, you might not have a strong sense of self or you might not have had a strong sense of self or you might have developed your sense of self based on who other people told you you were or or this limited smaller self that you believed was the only thing available or possible to you because of what happened to you or because of your circumstances. And so love is infinite. Love is infinite. That was my very first little tattoo that I got that is now covered up with my rose. If you look closely, you can still see it under there. But it, it was a heart with an infinity and it means love is infinite. And I remember when I was getting the tattoo, it hurt. <laughs> I, I don't have a good pain tolerance for tattoos. I know some of you could sit for hours and hours for these beautiful pieces that I know so many of you have, not me. So um, I, I needed a mantra. And so that was my mantra. Like literally as it was getting tattooed onto my skin, I was just repeating to myself, love is infinite, love is infinite. And like really recording that into my experience. Like there's nothing that is not possible with love. I have to believe that. To exist in this world at this time, I have to believe that. And I hope you will take it in, take it on in some way as well. So again, we get to be role models. It reminds me of that Marian Williamson quote. I know Marian Williamson, not, not the leader we hoped she would be, but that classic quote of hers still stands that when we shine our light, we give other people permission to do the same. When we love ourselves, we give other people permission to do the same. When we treat ourselves with kindness, when we ditch people pleasing, perfectionism, and all these other ways that we abuse and oppress ourselves, when we stop being our own internal oppressor, guess what? External oppression doesn't take hold on us the way it used to. So this is a big rebellion. This is also part of our activism, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a little bit. So this is why I'm so passionate about this being a responsibility. It's a destination. It's not a destination or an arrival. Like it's a constant journey. How you behave, what you do, how do you react in down moments, these are all opportunities for you to choose. Loving responses. You establish that baseline of self-love that you can always come back to and you would never dip below it again, right? I think I shared in one of the episodes or maybe it was in one of the modules of the course, there are certain things that come up and I'm just like, nah, I love myself too much for that. There are just things I absolutely so many things will not subject myself to ever again. And I pray and hope that you have those experiences as well. So give yourself some leeway. You're not going to align with self-love 24 seven. You're just not, no one is meant to, no one is supposed to, but it becomes an experience that you have more often than any other experience. That's the goal. So I also wanted to say the thing about self-love being activism. If you want to dismantle something, one way is to remove its life force. You suffocate it. You remove its oxygen, literally, energetically, and metaphorically. 
This is why I revised my use me prayer. So for many years, some of you have heard me say this over and over again. I've been saying this prayer since 2012. Use me, move me, make me a force for expansion, for love, for good, and for healing. And this year in 2020, as I just got so much more clear on what is my role in the revolution, what am I here to do? Um, especially this was has been such a clarifying year because there's so much to be done. I revised my prayer to be use me, move me, and make me a force for self-love, healing, wholeness, and liberation. We have a lot to break free from. There are other mechanics and fights to be fought to contribute to the dismantling um, of all the systems and all the things that don't work properly for all beings, right? There's plenty of systems that work properly based on who set them up and who they were meant to serve but they're certainly not serving all of us. And so that's the shit that we are here to bust up, break up, blow up, burn it down, right? So there are so many things that need dismantling. There are so many brilliant people out there working towards that in the way that they are meant to supposed to, they are meant to, or they are supposed to. So while they do that, this is what I'm here for. And part of loving yourself is allowing yourself to claim what's your part in the revolution too, what you're here for. I like to think of this work as special forces. I've been calling it spiritual special ops for years, since 2015 when I started doing Untame Yourself intensive healing weekends. Just like militaries need different branches for air, sea, land, and then all kinds of tactical units for special missions, so do we. And this tactical unit is about the embodiment of self-love, healing, wholeness, and liberation. This is the under the hood work that we do so that we can also do the out in the world work better. So for me, if 2020 got me clear on anything, it's that this is my lane and this is what I'm here to do. This under the hood, this behind the scenes stuff that's gonna fortify anyone who wants this to go out and do their work in other ways better, with more energy, with more passion, with more confidence, with more faith, with more vitality, with more rigor, whatever it is, you will be fueled, you will be energized by this healing. So let's answer these boundary questions. Um, these are some good questions. Oh, I just had it open and then I lost it again. Okay, here we go. How do you deal with a rude family member? One of my favorite ways to deal with rude people is to just be unfazed by it in response. Um, there's a couple different ways to do this. If you look up, there's a technique called gray rock, which specifically is recommended for folks dealing with narcissistic people or emotionally abusive people. And, and gray rock, for the most part, is to be as neutral as you can like a gray rock, right? And, and not really give them anything to work with. So if someone says something rude to you, you could literally just be like, okay. And that's that. Um, I have a family member who sometimes will like send me text messages about like things, trying to like hook me into their drama. And sometimes I just respond, no. <laughs> They'll be like, what do you mean no? And I'm like, just no. <laughs> that, that might not be your style, but really is is to just kind of like what I was saying earlier in a different context. You got to take the life force away from that stuff. Just don't give it energy. You could literally just be like, okay, or huh, that's interesting. And then change the subject. You literally do not have to engage with it. That is what I would recommend above all else. Because um, people who are being rude like that, unless you've had a courageous conversation with them about it before and how it makes you feel and like the impact of their behavior on you, um, and they've shown you that they can like hear you and they'll, they'll change or they're listening or they care. Um, there's no point in engaging with it. But if you haven't had that kind of conversation with them yet, I recommend using my courageous conversation framework, which if you go to untameyourself.com forward slash conversation, that's where that lives. And that'll help you out with that. Okay. How do you set boundaries with others without compromising authenticity? So I don't necessarily, this sounds like a question I would need some context for because in my experience, boundaries are one of the most 
authentic things that we can do. So to make sure your boundaries are authentic, you could just share how you're feeling currently. And one of the things I always say is I reserve the right to change my mind. So it's okay as you're setting your boundaries to be like, hey, this is how I feel right now. It might change, but for now, this is how I feel and this is what I need. So this is what I need to discuss with you. Um, Someone says, when the boundary is still not being respected, then what? What's the best way to remind, reinforce a boundary that's been set? So when you are first setting boundaries with people, I I don't remember if I said this in the episode last week or if I said it in the course. So um, let me just say it again. We do, it is kind to uh, understand that if you haven't had boundaries with people, and you are starting to set boundaries with folks, it's an adjustment for them too, right? It's unreasonable to expect people to just get on board with your boundaries right away because in some cases it's shifting the energy, it's shifting the dynamic, the emotions, power people thought they had or power they were banking on having over you. And so it could be really disorienting for other people. So when you start to set boundaries with folks, it might take several tries, right? And I'm not even just saying a couple. There might be some things that you like constantly have to remind people. I'll give you like the simplest example, which is that it was the year was 2015. So five years ago, literally almost to the day, because it was right, um, right around my birthday in 2015, that I asked people to stop calling me Liz because I wanted to be called Elizabeth. Five years later, there is still some people I'm having to remind me to call, I'm having to remind to call me Elizabeth and not Liz. So um, it's okay. And, and so what I like to do is give people gentle reminders. I, I love using levity as a tool, um, not only for connection, but for um, just allowing things that could be heavy, that could be confrontational to be a little bit lighter, but without dismissing or minimizing your actual experience that you're having. So uh, this works well with something like reminding people to call me Elizabeth, right? Like I'll be like, hey, so-and-so, just another reminder, it's Elizabeth. Um, Don't worry, I'm happy to keep reminding you until the day I die because I really don't want to be called Liz, you know? Um, You could be a little sassy about it if you want, depending on your relationship with the person. Um, But I think about people in my family, for example, who I've set boundaries with, and after it's already been well stated, it's just a matter of being like, hey, you know, um, remember we talked about this? It, I really would prefer that, you know, insert whatever the boundary is. If you can't do that, it's cool, but I'm going to have to adjust how I engage with you if that's the case. Um, and sometimes how you handle, how you reinforce a boundary with someone is you just change the way you engage with them. It doesn't need to be a conversation because when once people have shown you that either they don't care or they're not capable or, you know, they're working on it, but they're not quite getting it right. It might just be a matter of you just engage with them differently. You just engage with them differently. Like there are literally just some things that I don't tell certain people in my life anymore. There are some things that I won't involve people in. I just, I just will interact. I'll just engage with people differently. So sometimes it's a matter of shifting, making an unannounced shift and you just deal with it on your end and you know whatever whatever the other person wants to do they can do if you need to have a conversation you have one but you could also just change your own behavior towards that person um how do i know when to set one i realize really late as it's not my default this is a great question and to answer it i'm going to really suggest that um this person if you're listening or if, if you are not the person who asked this question and you're listening and you're like, how do I know when I need a boundary? Go back and listen to the rest of the series because where we talk about especially um, really all the things, self-love, self-awareness, self-knowledge, self-acceptance, self-trust, and self-respect. Um, if you go through those episodes, you will understand where you need boundaries based on a variety of factors and listen to that boundary episode. Um, how do you know if a boundary serves you or is another coping mechanism or if it's like a way to avoid stuff? This is a really great question. Um, the answer is this. You don't always know. Sometimes it might be avoiding something 
And if that's the case, I just want you to apply self-trust to that as well. Trust that um, either way, if you feel compelled, if you feel the need to set a boundary, you can do it and you will get something out of it no matter what. You'll learn because boundaries have to be flex- flexible. Boundaries have to be agile and malleable over time, right? Sometimes you might need to be more boundaried, less boundaried, more boundaries with this person, less boundaries with that person, more boundaries in this circumstance, less with that. You know, things change and shift over time. Your energy, your availability, your values, your health, like there's so many different factors, your level of stress, what you're working on, what's going on with your family. Um, You know, if you're in a period of life where there's grief happening, like you really might need to insulate a little bit more. So there's so many different reasons why um, you may or you may not need boundaries. So I'm just going to invite you to just trust that if you feel the need, don't worry about what you might be avoiding. Trust that if you need to face it, it'll find a way to make itself very obvious and very clear. This is one of the tenets to healing that I always like to remind people of. You know, we can excavate, we can really get caught in overanalyzing all the time, right? Really being up in the mind, you know, overthinking things. Do I need that? Do I not need that? Am I avoiding that? And we don't always see ourselves super clearly. I would rather just trust my discernment. This is why I teach embodiment. This is why I teach people how to tune into the body because the body will give you a more accurate read on what you need than your mind will. You could be discerning from there, which we talked about in the self-trust episode. And then you can just decide and you can trust it. You know, if this is what I felt was right in the moment, it was right in the moment. And then I will just move on and adjust from there accordingly. All right, everybody. (laughs) I told you how hot it was to start out the episode. My computer actually overheated, which has never happened to me before. It's happened to my phone, not my computer. So I had to switch locations. Um come to a lower level of the house that is less than 175,000 degrees. Might only be 165,000 degrees down here. So if you're watching and you're like, what just happened? That's what happened. I'm in a different room now. So, um, and I did finish recording the episode in the hopes that it was still recording. So this will be take two. There was one more question I wanted to answer. Somebody had asked me, They just wrote, he texts me once a week. Is this a boundary thing or am I fooling myself that he likes me? And so without context, without knowing more about your dynamic or your relationship or what's going on with the two of you, um, I can't possibly answer that for you. But here's what I will say. Have a conversation about it. It seems that if you're asking, you need some clarity. And this is a boundary that you can have with yourself to ask for what you need, right? If you need clarity, you can ask, is this a boundary? Um, Is there a reason? I I would love to know. It makes me uncomfortable or it makes me a little uneasy or kind of um, uncertain about what's going on here that you only text me once a week. So I'd love to know, well, you know, what's, what's that about? You deserve an answer to that question. And if someone can't or won't answer it or gets defensive, well... That in and of itself is an answer. So thank you all so much. Those were all of the questions on boundaries. And I just want to wrap up by also mentioning that in the workshop, the boundaries workshop of the self-love mini course, I ended up teaching a bit more about energetic boundaries than I ever have before. Um, And so um, check that out if, if you are someone, especially someone who identifies as sensitive, intuitive, highly feeling, deeply feeling, empathic, or any of those things. We spent a lot of time on energetic boundaries, and I loved, loved that conversation. And it was uh, people who were on the call, I, they kept sending in the like, like the mind blown emoji. So I know it was really landing for a lot of people, and some of these points were things that they had never considered about boundaries before. Um, Also, if you have listened to this series but didn't sign up for the self-love mini course, I do just want to let you know it's available to you anytime. And if you're listening to this in real time, which is September 9th to 14th in 2020, I'm having a birthday sale for the Embodied Living Center where the course lives. Um, I'm turning 37 on September 14th. So instead of the usual $49.99 a month, which is what membership to the Embodied Living Center is, it's $37.99. I don't know what's up with the 99s. I 
love the Mighty Networks platform where we host it, but they don't let you price anything without the 99 cents, which I find to be silly and I don't understand, but that's the way it is. So um, you can save 12 bucks on membership monthly. Um, you can get access to the course. If, you, if you're if you like a dynamo and you want to go through the whole thing in a month, you could literally access the course for $37.99 instead of $99.99. You can cancel whenever you want. I will say, though, when you sign up at $37.99, first of all, you get a free week. Everyone gets a free trial, so you can try it out before you decide to actually make the investment, which is kind of cool. But anyone who signs up, anyone who starts their free trial between the 9th and the 14th will get that $37.99 pricing. And by the way, that's for life. That's for as long as you're a member. If you cancel and come back, it will you won't get the old pricing anymore. But literally, if you join and you stay, it's like three years later, the price is never going to get raised on you unless you cancel and come back. If you, when, when you go to re-sign up, the price will be whatever the price is when you sign up. So um, that's a cool thing I always like to do on my birthday. I always like to put something on sale. For the Embodied Living Center, it's already an incredible value, like what you get for $49.99 a month. I, I describe the Embodied Living Center it's my online healing center. A, my goal, my vision, my dream is for it to be like a Mary Poppins bag or like a cave of wonders from Aladdin where it's like you go in there and anything you possibly need to support you on your healing journey, it's in there. Prayers, meditations, community calls, embodiment, five different types of embodiment practices, um, old workshops that I've taught, new workshops that are coming, such an array of topics, um, so it's already such an incredible value. I'm excited. You know, I'm only going to put it on sale once a year for the birthday. So you can check out the course at wildsmovement.com forward slash self love and grab the monthly option if you want to get the deal. Or you can just go to embodied.untameyourself.com and check out the Embodied Living Center. So I want to thank you all so much for listening. I loved doing this series. I loved getting to go deeper and root deeper and anchor into that framework and build it out a little bit more. I loved hearing your feedback. Thank you so much for sharing. I got so, tagged in so many posts on Instagram. I got so many messages and DMs, um, comments on the YouTube channel. Um, I'm really excited. It makes me more excited for the next series, which is going to be on less control, more magic. So in the Wild Soul Movement practice, which is the healing embodiment practice that I created back in 2013, we use mantras as part of the practice. And less control, more magic has been one of the mantras under the healing pathway of surrender since 2014 when I first started teaching it um, as a course. And people love this mantra because I guess a lot of people who come into my world have control issues, which is not surprising because I used to be queen of control issues. Now I am excellent at surrender and trust. And my faith is much, much, much larger than anything I'm ever afraid of. Um, but that took a lot of practice. And this mantra, less control, more magic, is really one of the things that helped to get there. So I wanted to, just like the concept of self-love, I wanted to take that concept of less control and more magic and build it out and go deeper and explore it a little bit more. So at the end of October, that's going to be the podcast series that we kick off. It'll be six weeks. There will be a mini course to go with that as well. There'll be two workshops. That mini course will just be four weeks. We'll look at the less control side of things, which my approach to that is to help you learn how to really alchemize and transmute and deal with these big feelings and emotions that trigger you into control. So things like fear, worry, doubt, insecurities, self-worth stuff, stress, anxiety, um, those types of big feelings that we all deal with. Uh, we're going to go through that under less control. And then the more magic side of things is when, as you release control, you make room for more magic in your life. And magic looks like allowing. Magic looks like surrender and trust. Magic looks like actually manifesting. Um, and I believe in manifesting. I believe in metaphysics. I believe in energy work. I've been doing a lot of work since July to 
kind of unpack and reorient myself around all the different trainings, certifications, teachers, books, all the things that I've studied over the last decade around energy healing, energy medicine, energy work. You know I'm not into the law of attraction. I did a whole episode about that last year with my friend Shanda Catrice. Check that out if you want to. Um, I don't believe in the spiritual bypass. I don't believe in the light washed or whitewashed version of things, which a lot of law of attraction stuff is, but there are for sure really integrated, embodied, grounded, but still like very mystical and very magical truths to the art of allowing and manifesting magic, miracles, all of these things. So we're going to get into that in that series. That is coming at the end of October, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you're following me on Instagram so we can stay in touch, at Elizabeth D'Alto. Um, and if you follow on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Elizabeth D'Alto, um, I will be posting some videos um, sporadically on the YouTube channel unrelated to the podcast between now because we were, we're taking about a six week hiatus until the next series so make sure you're subscribed and checking the youtube channel again thank you all so much i love you people i appreciate you i hope you stay doing this self-love work i hope you embody it i hope you get to feel it i hope the people in your life and your work and everything you do and everything you touch gets to benefit from you having more self-love so again for the one millionth time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you. See you later.